Today's sermon is titled, UUSC Sunday, The Meaning of Home, to be delivered by Laura Randall. Reverend Laura Randall is the Associate Director of Development for Congregation Relations of the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. As a member of the UUSC's development team, Laura facilitates partnerships to strengthen the impact of the UUSC and the social justice reach of UU communities. Through preaching, teaching, relationship building, and fundraising, Laura connects the work of the UUSC to Unitarian Universalist congregations. Prior to joining UUSC, Laura's denominational work included serving as the Legacy Campaign Director for the Wake Now Our Vision Collaborative Campaign and as the Legacy Gifts Manager for the Unitarian Universalist Association. Laura's ministry has also included hospice chaplaincy and Alzheimer's education and advocacy. Laura holds a master's degree in divinity from Harvard Divinity School and a bachelor's degree in English and communication studies from Alfred University. Please welcome Laura Randall. Friends, it is so good to be with you today. I'm grateful to Andy Fagan for the invitation and for all he does to uplift the work of UUSC. And I'm also immensely grateful for you, the UU community of Cambria. You've been such a steadfast ally to UUSC over the years, from your support of the Guest at Your Table program to your own local social justice initiatives. Thank you for living out your Unitarian Universalist values in this way. I wish we could be together in person, but I appreciate you inviting me into your home virtually. This year has many of us thinking about home, both the concept of home and the very particular places we call home. Take my home, for instance. <laughs> There's a large water stain on the bathroom ceiling, peeling wallpaper in the bedroom, and the kitchen linoleum witnessed the Nixon administration. My home is filled with creaks and clutters and way too much dog hair, and I really love it. I know my family and I are among the most privileged in the world right now. I have work and the ability to do that work from home. I have running water, electricity, and space for a few raised vegetable beds outside. In some ways, my physical world has gotten so very small in these last months. Seeing the same rooms and the same patch of earth so consistently, unceasingly, is a new experience for me. The urge to go somewhere, anywhere, is strong. And yet I've never had more appreciation for the space my family and I call home. These unremarkable walls keep us warm and hold all the gratitude and anxiety these times have created in us. With all the uncertainty and upheaval surrounding us now, I've never been more aware of the importance of home, the importance of the place of shelter, stability, and belonging. Not all of us have this experience of home. For some of us, home is or was anything but stable and welcoming. Home can be dangerous. And I know there are some of us who work essential jobs who've had to leave their homes to keep their families safe from this virus. And there are those of us for whom that kind of separation isn't an option and therefore whole families are bearing the risk of exposure. Some of us never feel safe in our homes, knowing that at any moment state agents could burst through the door to arrest us or kill us. And then there are the many of us who find ourselves in the liminal place of no permanent home at all. Home is complicated. It is a place of longing and it is a place. It is a physical structure and it is a community of people. It is an anchor and an imagined ideal. It is a fundamental necessity and an evolving act of creativity. Home is the foundation upon which we build our lives 
and the outcome of countless generative acts of love and repair. The work of the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee, or UUSC, is fundamentally about home in so many ways. This has been true since our founding 80 years ago, when the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee partnered with Jewish refugees and political dissidents in Europe in an effort to get as many people fleeing the Nazi regime as possible to safety. Today, our work focuses on climate force displacement, crisis response, and migrant justice. While these initiatives may seem unrelated at first glance, they are at their very core all about home. The right to security within our homes, the right to restore our homes when they are ravaged by natural or human made disaster, and the right to seek new homes elsewhere. The four UUSC partners highlighted in this year's Guest at Your Table program each share stories that are primarily about the homes they are fighting for. Be that the villages they are trying to salvage from the effects of climate change, the communities they are trying to hold together as they navigate disaster and persecution, or the necessity of finding a new place to call home away from unremitting violence and economic devastation. This is Chief Sheral Parfait Dardar, chief of the Grand Kalu du Lac Band of Biloxi Chittimacha Chukta tribe in Southern Louisiana. And she's been advocating for her community for as long as she can remember. She has seen the land her tribe calls home drastically change in her lifetime as rising sea levels and saltwater infiltration have claimed homes and destroyed farmland her tribe depends on for sustenance. Recently, Chief Sherelle joined with other First Nations and Indigenous people facing similar climate force displacement, taking their fight all the way to the United Nations. Chief Sherelle explains, we have joined together with our Alaskan relatives to bring awareness to the damages caused by greed and selfishness with a complete disregard for Mother Earth and all living beings. We are showing the world that you do not have to just sit by and watch our planet, our health, and our life ways be destroyed. Thousands of miles away, Mark Stagey, climate researcher with UUSC partner organization Joe Jacum, is working on a similar climate issue facing communities in the Marshall Islands. As an indigenous scientist, Mark is committed to involving his community in the climate crisis research that affects them the most so that a full picture of what they are facing can be understood and planned for. Collaboration is key to handle complexity, and so I've been motivated to keep the tools for collaboration by sharing and adapting both Western and Indigenous knowledge to promote innovation and identity, says Mark. And just as UUSC partners with those those fighting to save their homes, we also partner with those who've been forced to find a new home elsewhere. Since 2017, over 700,000 Rohingya Muslims from the Rakhine state of Burma have been forced to flee their homes into neighboring countries due to the genocide perpetrated by the Burmese military. This is Suja. Suja Karamudin was compelled to escape his home as a teenager after being detained and tortured by Burmese state officials. Suja struggles with a longing to return to his homeland, but has found strength within the Rohingya diaspora community, knowing that even in the depths of loss, they can be a bit of home for one another. We try to build that sense of community wherever we are, wherever we live, Suja says. Towards that end, Suja co-founded the Elam Empowerment Community Center, now a UUSC partner organization. Elam Empowerment is a Rohingya-led community center based in Malaysia that conducts youth capacity building trainings and facilitates food distribution for Rohingya refugees in and around Kuala Lumpur. According to Suja, the goal of Elam Empowerment is to provide a safe place for Rohingya refugees to come and breathe, 
a space where they can come and feel free. Many Central American migrants are seeking a place they can feel free as well. Residents of Central American countries such as Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua are still contending with the aftermath of intense civil wars, some of which lasted decades, which targeted the indigenous people of these lands along with poor farmers. To this day, extractive mining and drilling industries, drought exacerbated by climate change, and deadly domestic and state-sponsored violence force people from their homes and across borders. Women, LGBTQI plus people, and indigenous people are especially at risk for these factors that lead to needing to build a new home elsewhere. This is Adela Ramirez a human rights advocate with UUSC's partner in Guatemala, Association Popno. She says, the majority of people here live in conditions that are not good and poverty prevents them from fully living their lives. People cross the border in search of new opportunities for their families. That is why we always say migrating is an act of love. Migrating is an act of love. And this act of love is being met increasingly by cruel and xenophobic policies by the United States. Decades of draconian and deadly US immigration policies are culminating in crowded detention centers, which provide ideal breeding grounds for COVID-19, a near complete dismantling of the asylum system, the destruction of a humanitarian aid station in the Arizona desert by border patrol agents, the suspension of due process and deportation hearings, and still the continuation of family separation. Not only are these actions cowardly, hard-hearted, and small-minded, they also fundamentally deny a truth that could not be clearer. We are all connected. Those of us privileged enough to currently have safe and relatively stable homes are reflecting on how cent the centrality of such places in our lives right now, especially now. Does the possibility of losing this home seem as distant as it once did? Can we imagine the results of climate change making our homes uninhabitable in the near future? Or what about government policies making it impossible to stay? This is already the reality for many of us. And for others of us, these potentialities no longer seem improbable. This is a lot to take in. The question now is, can we channel this uncertainty, this fear into empathy and commitment? Can we approach these challenges with a spirit of collaboration and determination? Can we recognize our interdependence enough to realize that our homes, our health, and our lives are all inexorably connected? We can, and we must. Remember poet Benjamin Zephaniah's words, we can all be refugees. Sometimes it only takes a day. Sometimes it only takes a handshake or a paper that is signed. We all came from refugees. Nobody simply just appeared. Nobody's here without a struggle. And why should we live in fear of the weather or the troubles? We all came here from somewhere. Nobody simply just appeared. We all came here from somewhere. This earth is our home. Some of us live on the same patch of land our ancestors have called home for millennia. Others have called this land home for a few generations, if that. Some of us long for a distant home we remember from our youth, and others of us have always lived in the town we call home. Regardless of the miles between us, this earth is our home. The distress of our planet and the turmoil of our societies, these are the circumstances we find ourselves in regardless of what we wish were true instead, our relationships to our homes have dramatically intensified this year. 
Do we have the courage to turn that intensity into compassion? Can we feel, not just know, but really feel the primacy of the value that everyone, everywhere has the right to self-determination and safety in their homes? Some essential part of everyone longs for a sense of peace, a sense of belonging, a sense of rightness that can be described in no other way other than home. At UUSC, we will continue to honor that longing and fight for the right for all people to claim, create, and be home. On your screen now, you can see information on how to support the important work of UUSC and our partners, work that we can only do with your help. We are your service committee, your voice for Unitarian Universalist values in the human rights arena internationally and in the United States. Thank you for your commitment and for your generosity. I wanna lift up Chief Shirell, Mark, Suja, and Adela once again. I want to acknowledge both the loss and the resilience in their stories. What home means is changing and evolving for them and for so many of us. With courage, imagination, and determination, the home we help co-create with all of Earth's people will be one of more kindness, more gratitude, and more justice. Blessed be. Amen.